Hello, as you know, my name is Kain Sandy Genius, and today I'm going to take you step by step on how to configure Fillover Cluster in Windows Server 2019 step by step. So first I'm going to show you the setup I'm going to be using. The setup I'm going to be using is a four node setup. So we have the first node is going to be our Active Directory our domain controller. The first node is node one. We have node two. So these two nodes, uh, they are going to participate in the failover cluster. And we have node three to be our storage node configured uh, to hold the storage disks. Now how to set up this network is also, is also right there on my website. So let me just show you just in case. If you want to get to my website, you can actually just go to Google and type Kyneton the Genius and you can uh, easily get to my website right here and you can find this page. So if you get to my website, you simply, let's see. Okay, it's taking some time to load. Okay, so you simply scroll down a little bit. You can find all this uh, interesting stuff or you can search, you can use a search to find whatever you are looking for. You can find, find tutorials you want to uh, take. But today, let's focus on what we have today. Let me explain how this works. If you are joining me for the first time, I would like to recommend you subscribe so that you don't miss any updates from me. So we have node one, it's gonna be, when this node one fails, then automatically node two is going to start working. If node two fails, automatically node one is gonna start working. And this node three holds the disks because in the failover cluster you need uh, disks. So this disk can actually be placed in node one or two but since it, the disks holds the actual information, it's better we have them outside on another storage uh, node, which is configured as a storage uh, server. So how to do this configuration is also right there in the description box and right in my website. So let me show you all my computers at this point. Uh, so I have the setup here. This is what I'm just explaining right now. So I have these nodes. This is node one. It's, it's not configured, it's just Windows Server 2019. And we have the second node, node 2, also not configured, Windows Server 2019. And we have node 3, this is what I told you, our storage node, Windows Server 2019, configured to be the storage disk, the storage uh, node. And we have the domain controller, you can see all my computers right here on the domain controller. Before I start, let me just show you my storage node. So this is a storage uh, node. So if I go to server manager in the storage nodes and the computer configured to hold the disk and I go to file and storage and go to iSQZ, you could see that there are three disks that are already there. So how to configure iSQZ uh, storage uh, disks on a computer is also there on my website. So let's go ahead to get started right now. Since I'm going to be following this step by step, I would like to move this to my second screen so that it doesn't distract me. All right. So step one says, uh, let's see. So, okay. Step one says we have to determine the cluster disks. So basically we want to make sure that we have the cluster disks available. And I've also checked my node tree and the disks are available as I, as I showed you. So basically, if I go to my node tree, where I have the storage disk and go to this PC, you can see this three disk, disk one, disk two, disk three. Although they are in, in, in node three, they are be, they'll be used as a storage disk for the failover cluster in node one and two. I'm gonna be explaining this as I go. All right, so let's go to node one and two. The first thing you want to do is to configure uh, is to configure node one and node two by adding the failover cluster role. So let's start with node one. Simply go to uh, server manager. Permit me to just put back the, give it one second. All right, so what I was saying is that let me have this page right here, just in case I could refer back to it so that you can see where I am exactly. So let's start with node one. So start with node one. If you go to node one, you need to add the failover cluster role in node one. So simply go to add role some features and go next, next. And this is our node one and simply um, go next as well. 
and go next as well. So select the failover clause screen right here and click on add feature and then go next and install. So this is what you are going to do in all the nodes that will participate in the clustering, in the failover clustering. Let's proceed to node 2. So this is our node 2, as you can see. Let's also do the same thing, add the failover clustering feature in node 2. So I'm going to go to add roles and features. Okay, it's coming up. Add roles and features. Go next, 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 next. And you can see the failover clustering right here. Select it and say add feature. Go next and install. So wait for a couple of seconds so that it installs. So this installation completes. I'm going to simply close it. And after closing, it requires that you restart the system. So I'm going to simply come here and just restart. All right, restart. And I'm going to check the status in node 2. Okay, still installing. So meanwhile, this one is restarting. Okay, the installation completes in node 2. So I'm going to close and I'm going to restart it as well. So I click on restart and continue. So let's allow it to restart. And at this point, we created the fill over cluster uh, role. We've added the fill over cluster role in node 1 and 2. So let me log into node 1. All right, so node 1 has a failover cluster role. I'm going to show you how to check if this role is actually available. So let's check node 2. Node 2 restarts as well. So I'm going to log in onto node 2 as well. So I'm going to enter my password. So let's go back to node 1. This is uh, node 1. So to check if the failover clustering role is there, you can actually go to tools and you can see failover cluster manager. So make sure you have under tools, failover cluster manager under tools and the same thing in node 2, make sure you have the failover cluster manager as well. So yeah, you can see it right here. Okay, now the next step, I'm going to show you the next step. Uh, we've added the failover clustering role. So we are now in step in part four. We will now use the failover cluster manager to create a cluster. So in node one, click on the manager and select failover cluster manager. So now I'm back to node one. So I'm going to select failover cluster manager right here. Permit me to uh, close this window. So I have failover cluster uh, manager selected and I'm going to click on validate configuration. So when you click on validate configuration is you are going to specify all the nodes you want to use for the clustering and it's going to check that they meet up the requirement for failover clustering. So I'm going to click on this. It says to test an existing cluster, to validate a set of clusters, add the names of all the servers we want to use for the clustering. So I'm going to click on Browse. Um, I'm going to click on Advance and simply Find. Okay, it's asking me... Okay. So this is a computer that have... Uh, this is an account that has access to browse uh, your computers in the network. So I want to use node 1 and node 2 as nodes of the failover cluster. So I'm going to select them and click on OK and click on OK again. So it's going to add them uh, right here under the selected servers. So you can see they are added right now. So I'm going to click on next. Wait for a couple of seconds and then the next button is now uh, enabled. So you leave it at run all tests. It's recommended. Go to next and this inventory of all the tests that the tests that need to be run and go to next so it's going to run tests on this system basically it's going to be checking the storage space it's going to be checking the ip address that there is no conflict it's going to be checking the memory capacity 
to make sure that it meets up the requirement for the failover plus screen it's going to be checking the network connection and after the checks uh, the validation is complete and then we can proceed so let's wait for a couple of seconds for the validation process to complete so it seems to me that the test is almost completing so once the test completes uh, you'll see that some tests actually may have uh, all of the tests should pass but some might return a warning all right so you can see that the tests are uh, complete so there is a test report you can actually view it or you can actually save it so for now you can see that there are some warnings possibly uh, so those warnings for instance this one says network configuration so provided that it's just a warning then there is no problem you have software update warning you have uh, some other warnings you you don't have to worry about it but basically you can actually decide to view the detailed reports so if you look at the detailed reports you can see um, inventory passed network came out with a warning on the validate network configuration and um, it's actually nothing to worry about so let's just proceed so let's not all right so the validation complete successfully the next nice thing we want to now do is to click on create a cluster so we are going to click on, click on create a cluster right here so click on create a cluster remember we are in node one and um the next nice thing we want to do is to go next we are going to use this wizard enter the names of the servers that you want to participate in the cluster so exactly the same thing we did before we are going to select uh the two computers we want to use so it's always i think i have to simply disable this so i'm going to select node one and node two i'm going to say okay i'm going to say okay and i'm going to say next and actually wants us to uh, specify a cluster name and let's call it uh, ktg cluster you can give any name actually but um yeah so let's leave it at ktg cluster i'm going to click on next and next so hopefully it's going to create this cluster and it comes out as a node in the active directory computers with an IP address. So for instance, if I go back to my Active Directory, we are going to see the cluster created right here. So let's go back to node one. So it's creating this cluster. So let's wait for a second. Yes, you have successfully completed the cluster wizard. So I'm gonna click on finish. So now we have a cluster created and we have, it has a cluster KTG, has zero cluster and two nodes, okay? So this error here, recent cluster event, you can actually ignore it. It's, it's simply, um, uh, it has to do cluster name field registration of associated DNS name failure. So it's not able to associate the name with the IP. So this is the cluster created right now. Now the next thing we want to do at this point, so let's see, is this the step-by-step -step we are following, remember? So we are going to add disks to the cluster. So this is where we are. But before then, let me just show you in the Active Directory that the cluster is actually created. So if I refresh, you can see KTG cluster here and it's failover cluster virtual network uh, name account. But let's go back to node one. We are going to add disks to this cluster. So you can go to storage, you can go to storage and you can click on disks. So basically after creating the cluster, you simply click on add disk. When you click on add disk, you specify all the disk you want to select. So in this case, we have disk, disk two and three, and you need to select them. So sometime, if it's in your case, you might have all the three disks are listed here and you are going to select them and they'll be added. So you have disk one, disk two, disk three, okay? Um, okay, so, so this this the, uh, this three disks has been added. So for now, it's saying the three disks are in node two, but they can actually switch uh, between node one and node two. 
because this disk in the real sense they are actually in node 3 as virtual disks. So let's see where we are at this point. So, okay, this is the procedure we are following. Um, okay, so perfect. So at this point, we've succeeded in creating a failover cluster and adding disks to the cluster. So here it says disk weakness in quorum, available storage and available storage as well. And then it says um, the number of disk partition and okay. So this is basically how to create a failover cluster, two nodes, current vote one, assign vote, status are up, and then we have the disks, and then in our active directory, we have the cluster created. Now the question now you might actually be asking, uh, what else, how do we verify that this is working? How to verify is that when node one goes down, then node two is going to continue working uh continue working so for now node one and node two you can see node one and node two they are up but if node one goes down node two is going to start working so in the next tutorial i'll work on creating an sql server uh, failover cluster so that we have it on node one and two and when one of the nodes fails we see that the instance of the sql server will fail over to, no the, to the second node i would like to stop here Remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any challenges, please uh, leave a comment be uh, below for me. I'm going to respond to you. Like and share my video. As I mentioned, you find everything you want right here in my website, step by step. And you can see uh, how to do it yourself. I'm going to stop here. I remain kind and the genius. And we'll see you in the next part.